Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the video. Today's video is going to be a breakdown and analysis of the vocalist of Man of War, Eric Adams, who I had the distinct pleasure of meeting last year, which I never seem to shut up about. So that's as far as that goes. I originally told you guys about this video in my video before last, which was my thank you for your patience video because it's been a while since I uploaded. So. Let's do this. So Eric is the front man, lead singer, and just all-round nicest guy in the world of the band Man of War. He's been with many bands over the years, including a couple of bands with his fellow bandmate Joey DeMaio. So Eric made his first record with his band The Kids when he was about 13 years old. And he's played in loads of bands since then, and many years later in one of those bands, unfortunately, he lost a guitar player in a motorbike crash. And during a concert in his memory, just before they were set to go on stage, Eric and his then band, that I don't know the name of, if any of you do, let me know in the comments below, had their gear stolen. Like, what asshole does that at a, at a benefit concert for someone who, who died in a motorbike crash? How low can you be? This was the catalyst for Eric completely giving up on music as a career. He decided he was just going to be a meat cutter for the rest of his life. That was until Joey approached him with the opportunity to be in his brand new band with Ross the Boss, who he met during his days um, touring as an engineer with Black Sabbath. Initially, Eric said no. Through a conversation, you know, Joey said, oh, come on, think about it. Eventually, it resulted in Joey asking him to at least do a demo so that Joey could get his band out there. He, he would sing on the demo. So as a favor to Joey, Eric decided to sing on the demo. After the demo was sent off to record companies, Man of War got a deal. They were signed to a label and the rest is history. Eric became a full member of the band and Man of War was born. So Man of War have been making albums since 1980, with their debut album Battle Him being moderately successful and becoming a fan favorite. Since then, they've produced many studio albums throughout the years and throughout all different, obviously, all different parts of Eric's life. As you probably all know, the voice is, a, is as an instrument, as a singer, it's part of your body and it ages with you. So the better you look after yourself, the better your voice will be. So today I'm going to be analysing Eric's vocals in four parts. We're going to analyse his vocal range, his tone, his technique and his longevity. Let's begin. Range. Similarly to Rob Halford, Eric was inspired by the likes of Robert Plant and Ian Gillen, who both pioneered the use of supportive falsetto screams in rock and roll. The most common misconception about vocal range is that your highest note determines your range, but it doesn't. Range is determined by the distance you can cover between two points musically. For example, a range of C3 to C6 is a range of exactly three octaves. That's why anybody you see in the comment section of a YouTube video about vocals generally has no idea what they're talking about. Although he is a baritone, Eric has a range from a bass D2 in the song Swords in the Wind Forever to fight by your side to a B5 in Blood of the Kings. Two beautifully hit notes, neither lacking power or timbre. According to rumour, Eric has reached a C6 in live performances in the past, though this is yet to be definitively proven. However, I personally think it's more than plausible, based on the beauty and ease he has in hitting the B5. Tone. A very special gift that Eric possesses is the ability to maintain the same tone of his voice throughout his entire range, giving him an impeccable timbre, unmatched by almost any. Returning to the D2 and B5, you can tell in both these notes that it's Eric singing them, and both sound without tension. His head voice and his chest voice are just so perfectly blended that most opera singers would be jealous to witness it. Eric is the living embodiment of covering the sound, 
which is where a male singer can bring the same support into their head resonance as they can in their chest resonance to create a more noble, less strangled sound as one goes higher. Technique. Eric's defining feature is his technique, from which all the other points on this list are spawned. Without his incredible technique, he wouldn't have that unbeatable tone or his incredible range. In a clip from the Man of War Screaming Contest, he remarks about how he's able to hit his high screams without any unnecessary strain. When you fill your lungs up with air, when you breathe from here, you're going to go hoarse. You're going to talk like this real quick. If you breathe from your stomach and you watch me tomorrow night, some pictures I've seen of me look like I'm pregnant. When you breathe in, your stomach goes out and it makes you look very, very fat very quickly. That is my diaphragm muscle right there, yeah? Think of this as a balloon, okay? When you blow up a balloon, you have two choices. You can either let the balloon go, and it goes everywhere, out of air. Or, you can blow up the balloon, hold the end of the balloon, and squeeze it, yes? That sometimes when I hit those real high notes, I bend down like this, yeah? You seen that? Do I go, what? is squeezing my diaphragm. I'm just going and it's pushing and it's pushing the diaphragm right close. Comparing the likes of his screams in Call to Arms and Hail and Kill <laughs> to his tear-jerking rendition of Ness and Dorma from Man of War's live show in Italy. You can tell that Eric is in full control of his voice every time he sings. Not many metal singers have that kind of flexibility and variety. Longevity Perhaps the greatest testament to his talent is Eric's longevity. While he does sing some songs in a lower key these days, Eric is still capable of achieving notes and songs that he wrote 20 to 30 years ago. The best example, in my opinion, is Hector's Final Hour a song that most tenors would struggle to sing in their prime, and I would actually argue that the 2019 version is superior to the original, which was recorded in He is also still able to hit the high G scream in Call to Arms, which was recorded in 2002. And in Man of War's latest release, The Final Battle Part 1, Eric hits a B-flat 5 in the song Blood and Steel, which is only a semitone lower than the much aforementioned Blood of the King's B5. And he was 66 at the time of the recording which I think alone tells you everything you need to know about Eric's longevity. So there you have it. That is why I believe Eric Adams is one of the best vocalists of all time. That's my analysis and breakdown of Eric's vocals. One thing I didn't bring enough attention to um, in the previous points was Eric's breath control. It's impeccable. Eric's breath control is just unmatched. There's a very fantastic video by a singer or singing teacher called Zach. I can't remember his surname, but um, I've corresponded with him on comments on said video before, where he breaks down Eric's vocals in the song Master of the Wind. 
Uh, it's a very, very good video. Obviously, my video is more of a breakdown about Eric throughout his career and sort of the kind of singer that he is. Zach's video goes into much more detail about what Eric looks like on an average performance and the kind of things that he does when he sings. So please go and watch his video. It's absolutely amazing. All I ever seem to do on this channel is recommend you guys people called Zach. But there we are. This is the different one. Spice things up a bit. Go give that video a watch. It's fantastic. And as I say, it will touch on some of the points that I didn't in this video. Thank you all very much for watching. I'm intending to make this a regular thing. I might do a video on Rob Halford next. I might do one on Bruce Dickinson. Let me know in the comments below what vocalist you guys would like me to pick apart for you. And to describe to what I would consider to be more beginner metalheads that may or may not know who these people are. Thank you, peace and love, and happy 2021. Hail and kill.